Hello everyone! So I recently picked up a Royal Enfield Classic 350 for one hell of a deal. Now I absolutely love this bike, but there are a few things that I plan to do to it to really liven it up a bit. Performance mods mostly, and a few things here and there just to make the bike that much better. Maybe switch out things like levers, the seat, headlight, maybe even install that tripper navigation, but who knows, I'm still undecided with those things. Here's the thing. The goal of this is not to make the 350 into some sort of speed demon. Not at all. Besides, the bike has some sort of electronic controlled speed limiter on it that caps the top speed at 75 miles per hour. Can that limiter be altered or removed? I'm sure it could, but it's not something I plan on doing. Basically, the whole point of me doing these performance mods to the Classic 350 is really to improve the acceleration and overall performance, or really the functionality of the motorcycle. As it sits bone stock, the bike is woefully slow, achieving a 0 to 60 mile per hour of roughly 12.5 seconds, give or take what incline of road you're on. It's not like it's a massive deal, honestly. I mean, I've not had any situation when riding in town or the country roads where the acceleration was an issue. Highway travel isn't the greatest thing in the world on the Classic 350, so if we can improve that as well, I would be more happy with the bike. Basically, I want to make it a little bit more versatile and more well-rounded, and I think I'm able to achieve that. The first upgrade on my list is this Stage 2 DNA Filter Kit. Royal Enfield riders swear by these, claiming that the Stage 2 kit improves things like acceleration speed, a better throttle response, a much better improvement to the airflow, and apparently I guess it changes the way the bike sounds. I don't know if most of that is true or it's just wishful thinking, in the realm of a placebo type effect. But DNA claims that this stage 2 kit will increase the airflow by 99.48%, all while achieving a filtering efficiency of 98 to 99%. The only real downside is that the stage 2 kit is somewhat pricey. I paid 125 bucks for this kit. It is what it is. At least it's not as bad as the one I want for my Yamaha Bolt, which I think is like 300 something dollars. What you end up getting out of this kit is the filter itself, of course, which is very similar to the same type of filter you get out of a K&N. Then you have the new intake plate. Goes without saying that it is vastly different compared to the stock one. The original intake is tiny and very restrictive. I've heard of people taking Dremels and cutting a larger opening to the stock intake, but I really wanted nothing to do with that. Besides, my hands are so shaky that I'll somehow manage to slip and cut off my left kneecap in the process. The filter comes pre-oiled, which of course is nice, and the installation is really like a two-minute job at best. Open up the left side cover, remove the document holder, Unscrew the original intake plate with a size 2 Phillips, and then just pull it out. Then basically reverse the process. Install the new DNA filter with the open side facing you, then the new intake plate using these same screws, and you're done. That's really it. I guess you could put the document holder back. I didn't. I don't really know if it matters, honestly. When you have everything installed and ready to go, start the bike and let it idle on its own for 10 to 15 minutes. That way the computers can adjust to the significant increase in airflow. Do not rev it, no matter how badly you want to. Leave it alone and let it do its thing. Once you've let it idle for the appropriate amount of time, you can then jump on and give it a ride. 
Now, when I got on the bike for the first time, I didn't push it. For the first 10 miles, I kept the RPMs low and same with the speed. It's probably not necessary, but I wanted to make double sure that everything was properly adjusted. God forbid I did run into a problem. The install was a success, and after about 100 miles, I've had no errors or issues to report. But more importantly, what has changed since the install? Well, for one, the sound is definitely different. When it was idling, I couldn't exactly tell, but once you give it a few revs and ride the bike, the difference is immediately apparent. There's a bassier tone to it. It sounds like the bike has more of a bite to it, where before it was so quiet, you could barely even hear it, and honestly, it sounded a little bit like a scooter to me. I'll throw in a few clips of the comparison between the two, and hopefully you should be able to hear the difference in sound. But sound is one thing, performance is another. Has there been any noticeable change with the performance? And the answer to that is, well, yeah. The throttle response is probably what you're going to notice immediately. It is much more responsive. It's such a massive improvement over stock. Before there used to be this kind of sluggish, laggy sensation when you would manipulate the throttle, whether it's like a quarter turn or full on. That sensation is gone completely, and the throttle response is now nearly instantaneous. As I was accelerating through the gears, I noticed it to be smoother than before, especially when you would get towards those higher revs. It's much more relaxed, as opposed to before, the bike you could really tell wasn't all that thrilled about being pushed to the higher revs. It without a doubt cruises better at higher speeds like 55 to 65 in the top gear. Even pushing it to 70 miles an hour didn't feel as taxing on the engine compared to before. As for the 0 to 60 acceleration, it's only slightly improved. The best time I was able to get was 12 seconds, if not just a hair under. So let's say roughly half a second of a difference. Now, going into this, I pretty much expected that. I'm going to be honest with you, especially since this bike dead stock is only popping out like 20 horsepower. An air filter change alone is going to help, sure, but in order to get the full potential, it really needs other performance mods to play off of each other. But you know what? I'm completely optimistic about it. This is only the first step in our journey with the Classic 350. 
there's still a handful of other things to dabble around with, which may or may not improve the acceleration time. Either way, I'm more than happy with the DNA setup so far. The improvement to the throttle response and how the bike behaves in general, both in the low and the high speeds, is enough to make that 125 bucks worth it to me. It might even make the bike run a little bit cooler since there's much more airflow going into the engine, but who knows. That's going to do it for part one, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're wondering what the next step is going to be, well, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I will give a little bit of a hint. The next piece of the puzzle will be coming from the UK, and it is much more expensive than this DNA filter setup. So there you go. I hope to see you guys in the next video, and if you have one of these on your 350s, let me know how you like it. I'm a big fan of it so far, but I'm curious to hear your experience with the DNA setup. Anyway, take care guys, and as always, ride safe.